Glad you're with us today for the Retirement Income Show. I'm Mark Elliott, Troy Sharp, the CEO and founder of Oak Harvest Financial Group. Find out more on the website, oakharvestfinancialgroup.com. The office located at I-10 in Bunker Hill at 920 Memorial City Way. Uh, you can always call the team if you'd like to ch- learn more about some of the questions or concerns you may have about retirement or any financial questions. The team's here to help. It's 800 822 64 34. There's no cost. There's no obligation to chat with the team. 800 822 6434. And of course, you can always go to the YouTube channel. Well over 100 videos now on YouTube. Just search for Troy Sharp and Oak Harvest. And I guarantee if you have a concern or a question about retirement or the financial world, uh, Troy's probably got a video on it. Just search for Troy Sharp, Oak Harvest, YouTube. Troy, you know, there are so many, you know, all the scenarios, your, your Oak Harvest Retirement 360 path that you create for your clients, you know, it's uh, investment, income, tax planning, health planning, uh, legacy, estate planning, social security, when and how do we do it's in the income part, Medicare's in the healthcare part. There's so many moving parts, but everybody's different. There are savers, there are spenders, sometimes they're married, sometimes they're both savers, sometimes they're both spenders, most times one's one and one's the other. Uh, but it's always interesting. You, you had a story a, way, a ways back that I always thought was really interesting, and it's the buffalo or the cow. And it's kind of how we look at things. And I would imagine, I don't know, maybe sometimes you even have spouses that one looks at it more like a buffalo and one would look at it more like a cow. Explain that story because I think it's kind of fun. And especially we're going into a brand new year. We know our outlook is so important and, you know, the optimism we have for a year uh, ahead. I think I don't we don't want to be pessimistic. We don't want to look bad. We've got to be excited about a new year. Yeah, it's a new year, it's new beginnings. It's always an opportunity to uh, get back on the path and um or the path you want to be on or the path you started on and life happens, life comes up and, and sometimes we get pulled astray and we need um, to get back on the path that, uh, that we originally intended to go down. So financial planning, retirement planning is one of those things where the worst thing you can do is put your head in the sand. Okay. Now, Certain parts of retirement planning, for example, I don't want you to put your head in the sand, but when it comes to those of you that look at your investment portfolio every single day, you probably would benefit from putting your your head in the sand, Um, at least looking at it once a week, once a month. Um, I know for some of you, (laughs) that would just be impossible. Um, But uh, we have so many clients too that say, Troy, you know what? I check in every six months. um, That's all I need to do. And there have been has been numerous studies over the years and I forget the exact numbers. So I'm going to kind of summarize here from my memory. Those who look at their accounts every single day, average around 5% a year. Those who look at their accounts every single month, average around six or 7% per year. Those who look at it once per year, average around eight or 9%. And those who never look at it average around 11 or 12. And the, it's a very simple story because it ties into the, f- the fact that the more you look at your money, especially once those paychecks have stopped, because there is a psychological transition into retirement. When you go from receiving a paycheck and saving, saving, saving to all of a sudden, this is all the money I'll, I'll ever save. No more paychecks are coming in. Now I start spending and start distributing. For many clients, that's a year or two psychological adjustment until they feel comfortable actually spending. Now, a plan absolutely helps that. But what that study does that I that I just mentioned is it really brings home the point that there is emotions. There are emotions tied into the performance of your portfolio when there are no more paychecks. And the biggest mistake that consumers make, and especially when they manage their own money, is the belief that things are rocky in the future. I need to go to cash. Okay. Or I don't like who's, who's the next president or the current administration, or I don't like, you know, the political policies that that are coming out of DC. I need to go to cash. These are mistakes that if you made, uh, we've seen a lot of people, we, we had to keep a lot of people invested prior to president Biden coming into office. No matter how much you disagree with the president's policies, the president has very little to do with how the stock market performs. Okay, so if you went to cash because of the administration that was incoming, because emotionally you didn't like the direction of the country, 
you made a massive mistake because the market is up significantly since that time. Those are the types of decisions that if you make that decision and, and if you pull that, that, that cord, you have cost yourself hundreds of thousands and sometimes in the case, millions of dollars. Now, let's think that through. What do you mean, Troy? How, how could I have cost myself millions of dollars? Yes, I missed out on the market run up. I could have made an extra 20, 30%. When I'm looking at financial decisions, I'm not looking at the cost or benefit of any decision today. I look at it in terms of the time value of money. So if you pulled out because President Biden was coming in and you came back in three months later, four months later, because of the fear of missing out, the market's up 25%. Let's say you have a million dollar portfolio. You cost yourself, depending on the allocation, $100,000, $200,000. Let's just say, you know, you cost yourself a hundred grand. That's in today's dollars. But if you made that hundred grand, if you had stayed in and had a proper investment strategy or someone by your side to help guide that decision, to help you to realize what the true underlying fundamentals of the market um, is or will be, or what we're seeing as far as expectations, that hundred thousand in 10 years, Realistically, you could expect it to be worth somewhere around 200,000 in 20 years, somewhere around 400,000. So when I'm looking at decisions that people make and decisions we make today for clients, we're not just looking at the value gain today. We're looking at the time value of that money and what is the cost or benefit over time. Then there's this whole tax component that overlays with it. And of course, you have inflation as well. You have to take that into consideration. Medical expenses, it's, it's, it's all tied in. And that's the type of analysis that we'll do. So a little tangent there, but, but ultimately we, we need to make better decisions. It behooves us to have a partner in retirement that has their ear to the ground, that is emotionally disconnected from the decisions that are being made every day. That's the power of a good partner. When you say, you know what, my investment portfolio is part of my income strategy, which is now a part of my tax plan, which is all a part of my estate plan. And we're setting initiatives and then we're keeping track of those deadlines for when actions need to take place that improve your financial situation and then being held accountable to, to those actions, but then also reviewing and monitoring and, and adjusting. That's what a relationship should look like with your retirement professional. It's not just put your head in the sand. It's not just look the other direction. And, and, and not be proactive as far as the planning side of things goes. But being passive on the investment side of things, for many of you, that is the right course of action. So I, I didn't quite get to the Buffalo story there, Mark, but um, I, I felt that was important to kind of go through. Yeah, and you mentioned hooves. So, I mean, you were kind of, <laughs> you were kind of in that area. So I do think it's really interesting, though, the, because emotions do drive us. And you, you brought up a great point that those that – kind of are a little bit hands off, but they've got a pretty good idea of what they're doing. And then there's, you, you have clients like me though, that really don't, they just rather go play golf. Troy, you make sure that I don't, you know, get in myself into trouble financially. My money's going to be fine and it will last. But th there's so many variables in all of this, people that are super aggressive, people that take a lot of risk because they're comfortable with it. And then others that don't want to take any risk at all. So I think there's a lot we're going to talk about as we move this show along, because there are so many different outlooks on all of this which your clients are not all the same at Oak Harvest, are they? No, absolutely not. I mean, it, at their core, most of our clients are very similar as far as a few key um, initiatives or goals that they have. They want to first and foremost make sure that they retire once. Okay, They want to make sure that, that once they retire, that they feel secure, that they know where their income is coming from, that they know they're not going to run out of income, that they know they're, they have a tax plan in place because they don't want to, to give more to the government than they otherwise have to. And they absolutely want to know that if something happens to them, their family will be taken care of. And that is done by having a plan in place financially and also legally on the estate side of things. So that's why we're bringing the uh, CPAs in in order to have one place under one roof where we can tie all that together. So you don't have to go to the CPA and then hope your advisor calls the CPA to get the tax information. Then you don't have to go somewhere else to talk to the attorney and then hope that the financial assets get transferred into the trust or the LLC or the family limited partnership. Um, it's all done under one roof. That's again, it's value. I talked earlier in the show. I would never walk into a bank without ever making a deposit and ask for a withdrawal. 
I would never just walk into Bank of America or, or Chase or the credit union and say, hey, guys, um, my name's Troy Sharp. I'm, I, you know, I'm here for the first time. I, I'd really just like to make a withdrawal. You know, it doesn't make sense. You have to make deposits into people's lives before you can ever ask for anything in return. So that has been our philosophy from day one here at Oak Harvest Financial Group is we need to provide value on an ongoing basis. We need to make deposits to, to prove our worth, to prove our relationship, to prove our value. And then we you know we can ask for the relationship. We can ask for the business. We can ask for the opportunity to work with you and your money. Um, but it starts with trust. It starts with a foundational principle of always putting your interests first, always um, the, the core the core belief I had when I started Oak Harvest Financial Group, and many of you know the story of my grandparents, was to simply be affirmed that if we had existed when my grandparents retired, they could have walked in the door, sat across the table from someone they unequivocally trusted, they would always act in their best interest, and have the ability to have the investments, the planning, the legal, the taxes, all done under one roof, have all those professionals talking to one another and know that they were going to be okay. 1-800-822-6434. Let's sit down, have a conversation and see if we're a good fit for each other. Hey, we're halfway through the Retirement Income Show with Troy Sharp, the CEO and founder of Oak Harvest Finance Group. We've got a lot more to get to. Stay with us. We're back right after this. <music> 